everybody. I'm Sean Robinson. I'm Carson Gruba. And uh, this is Living the Line. And today we're going to be taking a look at, uh, we're going to do another tech video. This is uh, part uh, of a series called pa Paper to Pixel to Paper again, uh, where we talk about different tech topics. And uh, we have a small but loyal and vocal following of people who uh, watch these videos and uh, really seem to appreciate them. So we keep on trying to make time for them. Uh, but uh, if you're watching this and you know you really dig these, please do let us know uh, if you're able to support uh, our video work by giving us a one-time donation on Patreon or, or sorry, uh, um, PayPal or being a patron uh, on Patreon. We really do appreciate that, and that definitely makes these uh, possible. So Carson, today uh, we are going to take a look at two different pages, and we might split this up into two different videos. So if you okay. watch this, um, <laughs> two two short ones, but uh, trying to keep them to one topic at a time. Awesome. So the 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 uh, rather long article that this is attached to uh, this time, Carson, discusses both sharpening and cleanup. And so we've taken pages through uh, the earlier, the line art pages through the earlier process before, uh, but we're going to do it today as a sort of speed run uh, in preparation for talking about cleanup. Uh, does that sound good to you? Sounds wonderful. Great. Always reiteration and, on this stuff because I keep seeing, like, I'm just seeing more and more things where I'm like, why is this not done? It's so easy. Yeah. And, and a lot of it's just the knowledge. And a lot of it is like Adobe doesn't make it easy because some of the stuff that uh, looks better in print uh, temporarily works looks worse in Photoshop. So, yeah, uh, which is fairly irritating. Uh, we'll talk about some irritating Adobe things today. Uh, but um, <laughs> so yes. the, the first page we're going to be uh, taking a look at uh is a very interesting page this is this is a uh a scan that uh someone sent me uh recently and it just happens to be um one of uh, a, a page from one of my favorite uh superhero comics I, I i know it's shocking shocking but true i have favorite superhero comics uh <laughs> i Ooh, read <laughs> I read so many New Mutants issues uh, from back issue bins and things like that. Um, and uh, this particular one I always thought was a very uh, cool issue. It was very interesting. It's a one-off thing. It's a, it's the a Secret Wars 2 crossover, and basically every single mm -hmm. character gets killed and resurrected in a single night, um, <laughs> which, it, you know, it was a very compelling uh thing and one of the characters knows she's going to die the entire time and is attempting to warn everybody else um but alas despite her magic horse is unable to live uh but this was uh drawn uh penciled by um what is her name mary wolsher uh mary wolsher uh, uh we're gonna put it up on the screen <laughs> her actual name uh and it was inked by bill sinkevich uh who had been a penciler and inker uh many many issues earlier um but uh, anyway who, i thought and who who your phone every time you do voice to text to me translates bill sign cabbage i know which I, I quite like uh if <laughs> you're you're not privy to it everyone but sean tends to speak voice to text and i get the <laughs> if we're going to release a book of like beat poetry based on us including right. little billy sign cabbage <laughs> I don't. it's terrible uh but um yeah uh, i was just yeah i, I talk talk text because that's the only way i can text and uh, that that is the uh, atrocious thing that my phone did uh, but <laughs> you know his, his inks are so amazing and uh, especially during this era i don't think are really typically reproduced very well so i thought this would be an interesting page to uh, go through process with and also because it's so old and dirty and you can see um, how this marvel board has aged over time there's a bunch of different things that were tended to be blue lines and there's also like um you know pencil marks and things like that and so, so people can get a, a good idea of what it takes to actually clean uh something like this some coffee stains on there 40 year old coffee stains <laughs> uh and such um anyway i love this page love this issue um thought it would be a fun one to take us take through the process so i'm going to do a very quick abbreviated version of um how do you prep line art and this would be done um I would be making an action that I could run on an entire batch of pages. So I wouldn't do this for every page. I would make one action and then run it on the whole, run it on the whole issue. Uh, so in this smart. case, yeah. 
Oh, well, thanks. Well, you know, you got to save time because this stuff is labor intensive. You know, save your labor for where it's work and let the computer uh, do the rest. But uh, it, so you can see the importance of getting color scans here. So even though we're going to reproduce this as black and white, um, we are uh, it, the, the color is going to be very useful. So all these colors here, this patina, we can get rid of this. So we're going to go up to image adjustments, black and white. And this filter here breaks out all of the uh, color into different bands. And the biggest bang for our buck here is going to be grabbing this yellow band and moving it up. As I move it up, it's essentially just moving the yellow band uh, lighter. You can see what happens if I bring it all the way down. Ooh. You're basically only seeing the white out now. So because this page is so aged, uh, we want to bring this, this uh, yellow up fairly high. And that's already taken care of most of our things, but then you start to expose some of the other issues that we might have uh, with the, uh, you know, watery inks and things like that, um, which, you know, you could have taken care of photographically. We're going to take care of in a fairly easier way here. So I'm going to grab a few of these other bands here and sort of test them out. So um, you can see that, like, bringing up the red, for instance, gets rid of the markered uh, page number at the top of the page. Um, same thing with the magenta... And the blue, of course, is going to eat a little bit of our um, blue line out, but you can, um, eat, you know, take some of that out. Um, but you can see that the some of the pencil is still here. So that's stuff that we're probably going to have to manually clean up. So this looks like a reasonable setting for the page. And we can just kind of preview this on and off. And so we're actually, I'm going to take this down just a little bit because it looks like we're actually knocking out some of the um, ink line by having that yellow adjustment so extreme. Where That's were you out. seeing that? Where was the one spot you were looking at? In right here in her dress, okay. this already fairly thin line. It's also watery. It was knocking yeah. it out a little bit. So you wanna be aware of those real extreme adjustments, um, the bandwidth ones, and make sure that you know if the ink is also fairly faded, you might get some of those things. So, um, and you can see we can actually, you know, our text is almost readable at the side here. Uh, now, okay, so this is our first step, and uh, the second step here is going to be to uh, actually make this into image mode grayscale. I'm going to discard all of the color adjustments, and this is looking more reasonable now. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you can see none of the black is really purely black. Uh, and the white is not actually purely white either. And so I'm gonna zoom into that problem area while I do this next step so I can make sure that I'm not gonna knock this out. I'm gonna to go to image adjustments curves. And this at the end here is our black point. I'm gonna move that up so that it's getting some of the black uh, blacker without making anything else fill in. And that looks reasonable to me. That dress is really interesting too, because you, you see like the right to the right of your curves adjustment box, like some really sharp, crisp black lines. And then right. like those wa washy ones. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting combo right there. And they're both obviously done with pen. Oh, you think the dress is done with pen? I, I th Well, I, those might be brush marks, I guess. I don't think so. Skipping. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just uh, skipping. Uh, mm -hmm. This is this paper sucks. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. inked on marvel paper but uh you know uh yeah it i think looks... it's a, i think it's a little skipping uh and you know there's like this little back i mean that that's a that's not really a super characteristic brush mark is it uh those are yeah. brush i think yeah right they're actually okay. yeah you can tell because the pin's like so thick and then the brush is so watery i don't know some of it hard to tell it's in, it's interesting to have those same in that wing right there those really light that may right. just be like a marker or something too that's faded over time versus like a dip pen up in the wings. Yeah, maybe. Uh, these are definitely dip pen marks. I was thinking these were brush marks, uh, but uh, yeah, could be. you know, I suppose you know, it's not can't tell for sure. Uh, but you can see that we're probably going to have some cleanup to do um, on these balloons. The the blue has really deteriorated into a sort of you know color that doesn't really didn't really come out in our adjustment um and uh you noticed i was paying real close attention to that area as i was adjusting because i don't want to knock out our lines um and uh now because adobe makes everything difficult sometimes they change these things we're going to resize this to our 
destination first. And um, so this doesn't have any tone. So we're going to use the preserve details mode here. And uh, just a quick uh, calculation here. Um, we're going to make it 60% of the original size, but we're going to change the resolution space to a, the overkill resolution of 2,400 pixels per inch. Okay. Definitely overkill for a page like this that doesn't have teeny, teeny, tiny tone. Uh, but, I, you know, why not, right? Storage space is cheap. Um, it looks super crisp. Uh, so that 60% times four, our resolution means 240%. So I'm going to make this 240% of size. And then uh, after that, I'm going to change our resolution space without resampling. Uh, the reason I'm doing this this particular weird way is because uh, Photoshop has recently changed how they record these actions, <laughs> and it's not particularly uh, good at knowing when you're trying to change different parameters. It doesn't save the correct parameters, so this will keep us from having to resize anything. So I'll go to um, Control Alt I again, and I'm going to turn off resample. I'm going to make this 2400. You used so to be able to do that, like just switch it to 240%, 2400 pixels. Oh, it's annoying. Yep. I could just do that in one step before, but now it won't the newer versions of Photoshop won't record that action correctly if I do it that way. Okay, so this um, is now in the right size. And what we're going to do now, still recording our action, is we're going to make a new layer that we'll call cleanup. And then we'll make another layer, uh, an adjustment layer. We'll go to new new adjustment layer, threshold, hit OK. And this is what's going to turn it into line art. And you get a little preview of what would happen if we did this without any sharpening at all. You can see how all these lines are blown out here. Yeah. Uh, same thing with all our contour line for our horse. And that's because um, that's the brushwork and it's gray. That's right. It's, it's, it's lighter than 50% gray. You basically. got it. So portions of this are lighter than 50%. And so when I talk about sharpening and the necessity of sharpening and things like that, this is the type of thing that I'm talking about. Um, so this is actually a problem that we're going to address in the cleanup stage as well. But um, we're also going to address this in the sharpening stage. So I'm going to turn off this layer. Uh, and then I'm going to select our background layer. And uh, as I've discussed several times before, I'm going to go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask and what this is going to do what this filter does essentially is it makes a very very local a hyper local uh contrast adjustment so the threshold is how much does it grab what does it see as an edge if you put the threshold to zero you can see it turns this black and makes it have speckles in it mm -hmm. so zero is almost never unless you've got a really blurry scan you almost never want your threshold at zero we're going to back our threshold up to like, you know, 10, 12, 20, something like that. Radius is how wide is the effect. If you make the radius really, really wide, it starts to sort of fill things in in a very mm -hmm. odd way. Generally, you want your radius, unless something's really wrong with your image, you want your radius generally but somewhere between one and three pixels. Uh, but if you got a really soft image, you might want your radius wider for some reason. Or if you want to use your radius to, you want to use this as like an effect to fill something in. Uh, but in this case, and the amount is the amount of contrast that it's actually applying. So in this case, if I have our, um, we have our radius to like, you know, somewhere between one and two pixels, and we have our amount to about 200. Uh, this might not come across super well on our um, Zoom call here. But uh, here's this giant Sam head. <laughs> you can see how it tightens it all. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can see it. Now, I, I got a question down on the arm. There's an arm to our right that's got some splatter on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but also you're getting some of those textural qualities of the ink. Yeah. Um, how do that's you not, deal with? Well, that's, that's not going to be a problem at this scale. So the splatter okay. has benefited. But all these teeny tiny little things, I mean, you know, you're, I don't even know how, how small that is. I mean, it's like a micron or something that's going to be filled in by the ink around it. Um, okay. 
So unless when you were messing with the threshold and the radius, it started to look like everything had speckles and splatters. But on that right. one, you have some intentional splatters. Exactly. Yeah. And and sometimes you might grab one particular area uh, and do that on purpose. So for instance, like the brush or the dry brush here, um, you know, we might exaggerate that after the fact by really applying some sharpening so that all these little bits of dry brush really come out. Gotcha. One of the reasons I was really pleased to be able to use a Bilson Kevich original is he's got all this fantastic dry brush and, you know, it doesn't always come through. You can see how much it gets tightened up just by this yeah. adjustment we're making here, though. And uh, those speckles so, stay, which is really like I hadn't even noticed those till you go in, but it's mm -hmm. a really nice look. Yeah, it's part of it's part of the look of it. And if you look at, you know, like a Sume A painting or something like that, you know, that's part of the look of the original. So um, that is our first step there. And then I'm going to do one more round of sharpening. But before that, we're going to do one more curves adjustment. What I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of knocking out just a teeniest bit of noise. I'm adjusting the white point down just a little bit. And that is knocking back some of the paper. And then I'll do one more blast of sharpening. Filter sharpen on sharp mask. And I'm going to use the settings almost the same, but I'll back up the threshold just a teeny bit. And you can see that this might be a little overkill. This might be a teeny bit noisy. Um, so I'll back the threshold or I'll back the threshold up a little bit more and I'll take the amount down a little bit. Okay, and so that is sharpening everything without bringing up too much more noise. So that is going to be our completed action for this. But you can see this is still a fairly dirty page. Yeah. <laughs> and also, not only is it fairly dirty, take a look at this, uh, the lines here. Yeah. You can see we still got a lot of blowout. So this is why you clean a page right here. So... Stay tuned for our other video, which will probably be up at the same time. <laughs> They'll just be embedded in different parts of the article. Uh, stay tuned for our other uh, video where uh, we do a little bit of cleanup. So if this was my action for the book, I would run this on the entirety of the book. I would, you know, go do some drawing while it was running. <laughs> and then uh, when it was done, I would come back. And not only does it save you time, but it's actually much, much faster to run a script or an action than it is to actually do it in real time. Even if you yeah. clicked everything through, the, the fact is that Photoshop is able to conserve because it doesn't have to use the rendering power to show you anything. It's just, you know, mm. popping the image open and then doing the thing and then closing it. So that's actually much faster in that respect too. So anyway, this is ready for cleanup, which is the last or another step that I do before I do anything else. So stay tuned for some cleanup. Sean, what would you be running to draw while you were waiting for this to happen? <laughs> I will be running to draw a page of uh, my upcoming, like really upcoming, <laughs> like in a, a, a year and a half, uh, upcoming graphic novel uh, discards. Uh, and we will take a page, a look at a page of discards when we do this cleanup. Awesome. So see you in a bit. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button and ring that bell.